recently read the book Poland by James Mishner. Uh, it was a book about Poland written from the perspective of three families and their various generations. And it told the stories of various famous events during the history of Poland. It was really interesting because of the way that the perspective was presented. All of the characters had consistent goals throughout the entire book, which was great. The history of Poland, according to this book, it goes along the lines of there were a bunch of smaller countries, city-states, if you will, in Poland. And they kept getting invaded by the Tartar, Tartars, but they kept rebuilding their cities, which is great for the Polish, obviously. Also great for the Tartars, because they just get to raid it over and over again. The next bit of important history after that comes at around the 13 or 1400s, when the uh, elective monarchy of Poland decided to elect King Jagiello of Lithuania as their monarch as well, which was really, which turned out really well, because the Teutonic Order, which was a collection of German knights who were spreading Christianity to the Christian Polish and to the pagan Baltic states. So, naturally, they, naturally, these Germans are invading Poland and Lithuania. Because, you know, what else would Germans do? I don't actually mean that, for obvious reasons. It's not true, being the main one of them. But, in any case, uh, the two sides come into conflict, and there's a big battle at a place called Grunwald. And the Polish win because of the superior tactical skill of their leader, King Jagiello, which was really, which was interesting. And so it moves along Polish history, and a common theme starts to form, namely that Poland keeps getting invaded, and Poland keeps rebuilding their society after getting invaded. It's quite an inspiring theme, really. But, and another interesting point in the book was the portion in which Poland was invaded by the Nazis. It showed the occupation from two main perspectives. The revolutionary hiding in the forest that has been a major feature of the game through uh, the game, the book throughout the whole book. And, of course, the poor Polish citizen getting caught in a death camp. Which is not good. Obviously. So, both of them go about as you might expect. The part after that is when the communists are in Poland, and the farmers in Poland are rebelling against the government in order to get better prices for their bread and such. Now this is really, really important because it marks the point at which Poland basically becomes a democratic, democratically elected country again. Which is really, really cool for them. Of course, Mr. Mishner didn't know this, I don't think, when he wrote the book. I might have to fact check that. But it's interesting that they, one of the main characters
characters in the book is shown as being the leading representative of the farmers, with another of the main characters being shown as the representative of the communist government, with the vast majority of Poland obviously wanting democracy. I just think that this is a really cool book in general because of the style in which it is written. It's... I don't know how to put it, but it's a really good book. Um, but... It's interesting that across most of the Soviet Union, there were... There was a lot of lack of food. And this caused, well, the downfall of the Soviet Union as a whole. Which, well, America kind of helped with, but, you know. In any case, it, it was a fairly common problem. And as something in the book says, um, as something in the book says, Austria, uh, the supermarkets of Austria, at the same time as the farmers' rebellion in Poland, were overflowing with food. While in the Polish cities, like Krakow and Warsaw, there were huge food shortages, despite the fact that Poland had a larger population than Austria, and a much larger and arguably more fertile landmass. It's ridiculous. And yet, that's how history was. The Polish, because of the poor government of the communists, was unable to provide enough food for its people, at least according to the book. And I suspect that James Michener has written a bunch of books like this. I'd love... I'm... I'd love to read more of them, honestly. Uh, the next book that I'm reading is a book called Founding Brothers, which is just another perspective of looking at America's founding fathers. And yeah, read this book. It is a great book. Trust me. It is great. It, the small details and overall themes of the book mesh together so well because of J Mr. Mishner's writing style. It flows very well. It's a great book. You should read it.